It's been a while since I painted in my Shizen watercolor journal. It's 100% cotton rough press. I've had fun with it in the past, so a revisit was overdue. In my experience, this paper works best with a very wet technique, so I grabbed a handful of my synthetic Neptune brushes, including the number four round and the half inch oval wash. Since I've been using the quill a lot lately, it was an automatic choice, but I decided to switch it out for the 12 round instead. Also in the bunch was an Utrecht Sabolette rigger. The idea of a limited color selection appealed to me, so I pulled out Da Vinci's Hansa Yellow Light, Permanent Alizarin Crimson, Thalo Blue, and, just for funsies, their lovely purple shade called Aubergine. But I wanted a convenience green, too, so Schmincke's Paraline Green snuck into the mix. The way an onion ring sneaks into your french fries. Unexpected? Yes. Delicious? Also, yes. That's two videos in a row where I've mentioned french fries, and I don't see a problem. Except that my idea of a limited palette turned out to be not so limited. I mean, there are three primaries and two secondaries. Not exactly the challenge I'd initially imagined. But who makes the rules anyway? That's right, I'm the boss, and whatever I say goes. But since YouTube says I should include a call to action, please like, subscribe, comment, and share. And maybe hit the notification bell, too. Or not. I'm the boss of only me, not you. So the old Irene made me do it excuse isn't going to fly here. I'm not sure if it'll fit in the video's title line, so I want to make this clear. My inspiration came from French watercolorist Jennifer Lefebvre. You can find her on Instagram and YouTube under the name Jenny Illustrations. And I'll link to the specific video that inspired this piece. I also attempted to paint a wreath in her style last winter. I would have loved for my versions to have turned out closer to Jenny's, but they went their own direction, and that's fine. As I lay down some very wet strokes, I hope you can see the character of the paper. It's quite a bumpy surface, making for nice pooling effects. Perhaps I didn't need to spend so much time on the first layer, since much of it gets obscured by subsequent layers. But I was still figuring things out, such as water ratios, stroke techniques, and color mixing combos. All things I'll probably forget the next time I want to do something like this. Word association time. The Italian word for obscure is oscuro, which brings to mind the term chiaroscuro, which means light and dark. It's often used in reference to how artists create light and shadows. In the case of this piece, it's only relevant in its non-applicability, because this has got zero chiaroscuro going on. Hey, with word association, there doesn't need to be a point. Hmm. Point. Pointillism. That's a painting technique using small dots of color. 
the most famous example being Georges Seurat's Sunday Afternoon on the Island of La Grande Jatte. I always just call it Sunday in the Park with George, though, because Sondheim. Hey, I can throw around art terms like pointillism and chiaroscuro all day, or for a good 20 minutes at least, but that doesn't mean my paintings will ever show up in an art gallery. By the way, does anyone else sometimes get chiaroscuro and churrascaria switched around? Churrascaria is Portuguese barbecue. Yeah, that mix-up has made for some interesting conversations. I've never experienced Portuguese food, but I'm sure it's delicious. Especially if someone's bringing spit-roasted meats to your table and hacking off chunks over your plate like a rockfall of well-seasoned roasts. So now there's a second layer happening, and there will be a third, too. Having a hair dryer in my studio, I was able to blow-dry the page between each layer. This shizen paper can hold quite a lot of moisture, so it took a couple of minutes each time. When I say studio, it's just a ten foot by ten foot space. There were times when I made do with a corner of the dining table and then had to pack everything away before dinner time, so I totally appreciate having a space dedicated to arting. I chose this abstract style because it doesn't require accurate details. Duh. So if you want to have some loosey-goosey fun, I recommend it. Because it was fun, especially when seeing how each layer enhances the piece. The colors worked fine, but I'd like to try it again with a different combination just to see how it might look with more red or blue mixes. It makes me think of a conservatory filled with all sorts of potted and hanging plants. Maybe there's a wicker peacock chair, a glass top table, and a pitcher of iced tea with lemon slices. Oddly specific, or charmingly detailed. Take your pick, because it's a choose-your-own-adventure kind of day, and the conservatory is either the scene of a bloody crime or a portal to fairyland. Yeah, I didn't, like, have a dream about nature going wild, covering houses and panda expresses with stiflingly leafy shrubbery, until sapiens and flora merged into slow-moving plant people. That totally didn't happen. If the scale were a little larger, I'd have used my largest Neptune, which is the number four quill. But as it was, I figured the number twelve round might give me better control, not a better line. Uh, the quill has a finer point, after all. I'm talking about general belly control. The phrase belly control makes me think of corsets and other forms of constraint. In the past, I was more concerned about my body shape. But the older I get, the more I'm like Phil and Lem from the Viridian Dynamic Science Lab when they made Deal With It their catchphrase. Man, I loved that show, but I think its title was a turnoff. I mean, what could be less clickable than something called Better Off Ted? Case in point, I didn't watch its initial run, and only caught it years later when it was streaming. Yeah, I stopped watching weekly series regularly a long time ago. 
just thinking back to the days before streaming and binge watching makes me cringe. Now, having to wait a whole week for a new episode is like a form of medieval torture, and one I only put up with for The Great British Baking Show and Only Murders in the Building. Yeah, the Inkwork Studio isn't big, but it's got what I need. And that's the workstation where I record the art projects, and the computer station where I edit the videos. Plus storage bins, shelves, and drawers for supplies. There are two desk chairs, so producer Mike and I can confab over products and content. But as it's just me in here for 90% of the time, I am in charge of arranging, organizing, and cleaning, which means it's usually a mess. It seems I can't remove the cups and trash as quickly as they accumulate, and I sometimes forget where I put things. In theory, tucking important items into little used out-of-the-way crannies sounds like a great idea, but in practice, not so much. I felt some splatter was needed. Was that wrong? Anyway, I could have ended things here with a We had our fun, and now it's time to part ways before getting in too deep. But I just wasn't ready to say goodbye. So, one Faber-Castell pit artist brush pen later, and there was no turning back. There's something very final about laying down ink. There was a little concern about how the pen would handle the texture of the paper, but it was, now choose one, A, okie dokie, B, hunky dory, or C, peachy keen. Don't worry, unlike in a choose your own adventure, there is zero chance of you falling into a crevasse to die a slow death due to dehydration. Because that's not how we roll here. Rabbit holes and a mild thirst, yes, but never crevasses and dehydration. I can't tell you what sort of plant species those are, They're generic foliage, okay? I have vague memories of learning how to pot a plant in grade school. No, that wasn't included in the curriculum, but my school was running a program called Friday Activities that took place once a week after school hours. There were things like bowling, painting, and copper enameling. One time I chose horticulture. Since each activity consisted of four sessions over the course of a month, we were able to observe the results of our handiwork. Not much, but enough to see sprouting, at least. Real exciting stuff, right? Much more fun was the time I attended an after-hours showing of a Star Trek episode inside the school cafeteria. Someone, somehow, had gotten a film reel of shore leave and put on a sort of movie night for the students, complete with bags of popcorn. Never mind that most of the kids were socializing rather than watching, I had a blast. Just a reminder, several different brushes were used on this piece, both a large and a small round, an oval wash or cat's eye, and a rigger. All but the rigger were Princeton brushes from their Neptune line. I chose those for their water capacity. Because due to Shizen's rough surface texture, if I don't use a thirsty brush, the strokes tend to have a 
dry brush effect, and that wasn't the look I wanted. Speaking of options, there were several others for this final layer. Watercolor, fountain pen ink, color pencil, any of those probably would have worked fine. I'd even toyed with the idea of adding gold watercolor accents, but since regrets were forming over the black brush pen, I left well enough alone. I don't always know when to do that. Like the time I went to a friend's house after school. We ate some snacks until they ran out, and I was like, let's bake some cookies. And she was all, but neither of us knows how to bake. But we ended up going for it. F flour? Check. Sugar? Check. What else goes in cookies? Potato chips and onion dip? Why the heck not? Yeah, no, they were awful. I'm happy to share this experience, and I hope it inspires you to play around with abstraction and layers. And if the results look like a tropical paradise or a 70s housecoat pattern, well, that's your choice. Until next time, remember, you're the boss of your own studio. Everyone else can just deal with it. And stay artsy, my friends.